Let's get it. Mike Semper Vivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, CRN2, SportsByline.com, Over the Air Affiliates Podcast, or maybe your video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining us today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. It is 110 degrees here. It got up to 120 with the heat index on my portion of Delmarva. I am praying for storms right now. I'll also send out some thoughts for all of you who are listening down there in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Be careful this weekend. Got a tropical storm coming in there. So it's a busy Friday, folks. Filthy Tom Lawler will be joining me here after the break. Brian is out having his own fun Friday. We got a lot to get into. It is SummerSlam weekend. We have WWE SmackDown tonight also taking place in Cleveland, Ohio. DIY putting up the tag team title against the Bloodline leading into Survivor Series. going to be interesting to see what happens tonight as they set up tomorrow's show with a three-hour pre-show. We'll find out if Filthy Tom is going to be checking out any of that. I actually got some good news to start the show today, too. If you're Mark Henry's son, Jacob, who is now signed with WWE, Jacob is a free state or freestyle heavyweight champion in Texas. He finished his senior year with 37 wins and is on his way to Oklahoma University. He was going to possibly walk onto the football team or at least attempt to as well. He's also very versed in track and fields. And according to Mark Henry, his true passion is professional wrestling. He says he's not trying to be the Olympic champion. He said, Dad, I'm not trying to go to the Pro Bowl or win the Super Bowl. I want to main event WrestleMania. I want to go to Japan and be champion. Nothing wrong with that. So Jacob Henry already signed on with WWE even before his collegiate career begins. Not too bad. Oh, we'll talk about that whole Britt Baker MJF thing too when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Sempervivi and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. You know, we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day. Sometimes with clear sentence structure. But if you want us 24-7 where we write sentences, you can find us on Twitter slash X. I am at Semper Vivi. Brian is at Brian Alvarez. Tom is at Filthy Tom Lawler. The website is at WONF4W, and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley is here with you on Saturday, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. And on Sunday, Andrew Zarian joins you beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like it if you made the Wrestling News part of your day as well. You can find it wherever you find your favorite podcasts or head on over to thewrestlingnews.com and at Wrestling News AB on X and Facebook every single day of the year. Everything you need to know to get your day started or get you up to date or even get you to your favorite long-form review pod like Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave and Brian. And I'll give you details on how you could become a member to f4wonline.com slash wrestlingobserver.com very, very soon. As I mentioned before the break, there is a story that has surfaced about a confrontation that Britt Baker had with MJF. This has been posted up to the front page of the website by Josh Nason. There are some details in the Wrestling Observer newsletter this week, which is available for subscribers as well. Dr. Britt Baker was suspended by AEW for a backstage incident involving MJF and his girlfriend, Backstage interviewer Alicia Atout. Dave Meltzer reported that the popular star who just returned from a lengthy absence due to injuries and a medical issue was either suspended for either one or two weeks and fined by the company's company's disciplinary committee. It's unknown when the suspension is up, but Baker was absent from this past Wednesday's Dynamite. While there are not a ton of details that have been reported yet as far as Every instance here, Meltzer said that it is something that happened at the 250th episode of Dynamite on July 17th, where Baker allegedly said something about MJF, which a tout heard. She then told MJF, who went to where Baker was to confront her about it. Ibu of Wrestling Purists added that the incident happened right after MJF's match with Will Ospreay opened the show with Fightful reporting that the Baker-MJF argument resulted in MJF punching a wall, 
before his hour-long match, so there might be a misprint on the front page there. Fightful's report also stated that Baker exercised frustration about MJF within the women's locker room. The outlet also reported that they had heard there was a confrontation between Atout and Baker, and that Osprey even talked to Baker at one point. The conflict was apparently due to unresolved issues in the past, and that according to Fightful, the two former friends had a falling out at some point over the last year. AEWHR then launched an investigation in an effort to settle things quickly and talk to people on July 24th. Meltzer was unsure as to what Tony Khan's involvement was as everyone was attempting to keep this under wraps. Baker is set to challenge TBS champion Mercedes Monet at this month's All In from London's Wembley Stadium. And Tom, uh, there are apparently people in that locker room even those who like Max that are wondering why Max didn't get suspended. And there are people that are wondering why anyone got suspended at all. Um, any real thoughts on any of this backstage drama that once again, we're talking about when it comes to AEW, as opposed to something that happened in the ring? Well, this clearly happened weeks ago and uh, is just now getting out. So really, you know, you've got to wonder how big of an impact this story is going to have on anything. Um, I think one of the, one of a few issues here is if you are a wrestler in the locker room, you want that to be a place where you can be open with your thoughts and not have to face repercussions. I don't know what Britt Baker said, but let's look at, let's look at the lay of the land. AEW pumped up. They promoted, they talked about this dynamite 250 for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And the biggest spotlight on the show was put on MJF and Will Ospreay. They had a great match, but it did take up an hour of the show. And it did take up a segment that was going to be watched by, you know, the highest amount of viewers on the show uh, with the lead off. And I can understand the frustration of people in the locker room who, you know, would have liked to be on an important show like that. Would have liked to be, whenever somebody doesn't get onto a WrestleMania, people are always upset. And AEW promoted this show like it was a big deal. And a lot of people were left off of it. So, you know, perhaps Brit's frustration came from that. Um, there's been other instances in the past in which, you know, like, look at Wardlow, right? He has never recovered from what happened with MJF. And I don't know what the situation was with that whole storyline, but, uh, you know, <laughs> surely it looks like one person... Uh, was in control and and kind of, you know, maybe inadvertently damaged the career of the other. So, like, there's a lot of factors in play here. You do not want to say something in the locker room and have to worry about somebody going and talking to somebody outside of the locker room. Now, conversely, you know, Alicia Atal, right, she's a new hire there at AEW. But if you're Britt Baker, you've got to imagine that whatever you say in front of her is going to get back to MJF. You know, you just have to be uh, cognizant of that fact, whether, you know, it, it's the right thing or not. Um, like I said, I don't know exactly what happened. Clearly, I wasn't there. But the fact that Britt Baker was suspended, if it was just words, if it was just complaining, if it was... Uh, you know, making points about somebody in the business, that's one thing. If she was insulting MJF and Alicia Atout, that's another. So uh, I guess we'll see as more comes out, if more does come out, or this could just be the end of it. And I don't want to play devil's advocate here, but, you know, let's say whatever words they were, that they were harsh enough where Atout you know, again, people do this at work. People have feelings. They let them out. They are 
if they're going out with somebody else they're working with, I mean, this is how clicks function and things happen in any type of job, uh, unfortunately. But if he was told this by a tout and marched himself into the locker room or where Britt was and threw a big spectacle about it where he got so upset during the conversation that he lost control of his, you know, faculties and decided to punch the wall. I mean, I don't know. I mean, those words would seem to be, to me, pretty harsh. And if they were that harsh, why was she only suspended for two weeks here? And why has this been a story that Pete has been floating under the water now, apparently for quite some time since July 17th? So, you know, it's just, there are a lot of questions that end up coming out of this. You know, Punk and Perry were both suspended, even though it was words from Perry and Punk was the one that, you know, assaulted him. And I'm not drawing a one-to-one comparison here to these two getting into it and punching a wall, but it kind of sounds like unless the words were that harsh, was she suspended because she was just dumb enough to say something in front of somebody's girlfriend in the locker room? You know, it just seems to be possibly one-sided here, here, which there are people people inside inside the locker room saying. Maybe, maybe the issue was with management as well. You know, maybe she said something disparaging about them. You know, I I think management management plays plays a big part part in this, Tom. Tom, And I think think management management is a problem that they have because, you know, the leaks there, it's like throwing water through a strainer when it comes to them trying to shore up leaks and things like that. And there seems to always be a situation like this where we're talking about a backstage event in AEW a lot more than we're talking about anything that takes place between the ropes inside the ring. We'll get Tom's thoughts on this as well as getting into everything that's going to happen this weekend, including the, the Survivor Series. I almost said the Royal Rumble. I said Survivor Series. SummerSlam. Subberfest. We're going to talk about it. Wrestling Observer Live. Fun Friday here on Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Tom, I don't know. Do you want to put a bow on this Britt Baker MJF thing? Well, I'll just say, like you said earlier, you talked about stuff happening in the workplace. Everybody's workplace has some sort of drama, right? Yeah. So yeah. it just doesn't go publicly all the time. So this could just be the end of it. I mean,. I bet you not, it won't not, be online. <laughs> it may. I'm not saying it's going to be the end of uh, drama in AEW backstage, but maybe perhaps this little battle. I, I don't think I, it's possible for backstage drama in AEW to go away. At least it, it, it will certainly be reported on because somebody is going to be saying something about it. And you have two big names like this. I'm not surprised that anything got out. At some point it was going to, and people love this sort of stuff. They love then choosing sides over it as if people have a vested interest in this, and now they're going back and looking to rebook Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker and all the that drama hair and this and that, and it's like, you know, in hopefully in somebody's mind there, they realize that this is not a positive, at least to me. You threw the biggest grenade that you could against the wall with something like this by showing the tape of CM Punk, and it seems as if they always do a lot of catering, and I understand why, because their audience is a lot harder core wrestling fan, so they are more tuned into things, but I, I, it feels as though they trip over their own feet because we end up talking about this stuff almost as much as we do the wrestling aspect of things, and... At some point, if you're Tony Khan, if I was Tony Khan, I would want this to stop. And I would want the leaks to stop. As soon as he, and I'm sorry I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here, but when the ESPN deal happened and CM Punk interviewed them, and then instantly there were retorts to CM Punk that came out of AEW and were, it just was like, and off of, you know, you had parameters for an interview. It went the way that it went. Some people had feelings about it, but we should not have heard it had all of that fallout after an interview like that. It just is insane. You don't see that in other places where you get that type of fallout, but it was because of people talking and people inside of the company talking and their inability to not to stop people from 
talking in a way where it damages the overall product and it damages, uh, to me, everything about... Look at where AEW is at right now. Look at their fan support. Yes, their hardcores are harder than ever, but they've atrophied a lot. And I don't see how leading into All In, any of this is beneficial. Any of it. And that's what people are now going to be talking about instead of the fact that they've had some good shows. It, this is going to be an all-weekend thing where, once again, at least to me, AEW, it doesn't look minor league, Tom. But again, it shows why, again, there are some places that are in better positions than <laughs> some companies are in better positions than other, and some organizations are in better positions than others because it just seems like i don't want to say a lack of institutional control but at some point you just shrug at least i do shake my head and go okay what is it going to take to try to get everybody on the same page of moving this boat forward and is there somebody that can actually be in a position there to move the boat forward there's going to be people you don't like to work with there's going to be people that come from the outside that you don't like that are beneficial to your business and you got to figure out a way to make it work. And they actually seem to be less than ever making it work. Yeah. And that's my, that's TED, my talk TED talk for today. for today. Mike, I really hope this is not the case because in a perfect world, there would be five, six national promotions flourishing with various different styles of professional wrestling or combat or, or something of the the like <clears throat> but if i'm not mistaken i believe aew's exclusive deal with wbd just came up as well and if you're looking at it from the outside in and you're looking to you know get a property or to invest in a property and you see backstage unrest all of the time you see stories coming out about uh you know people being upset with their position in the company wanting out, you know, you have to think twice about, you know, pumping money into uh, a situation like that. And obviously WBD has a much better handle on things, a much better uh, idea uh, about what they're getting with Tony Khan than, than I do. I'm not a businessman, but you know, if I was, I I'd be, you know, taking a second look at this and be thinking, you know, what could, what could they do to make things better? Because over the past couple of years, they haven't been able to do that. And apparently there's people there that are completely understanding of the fact that there's pro wrestling and they wanted Chris Jericho or Chris Jericho was a big deal to get that thing off the ground. CM Punk was a name that was linked to, oh yeah, WBD is, is all about this. Obviously, there was the case of the Briscoe brothers where Jay Briscoe and Mark Briscoe were not going to be allowed ever on anything. that. So obviously, there's people there that pay enough attention, again, whether it's enough to have any impact on their negotiations or not, I don't know. Obviously, AEW, regardless of any ratings uh, discourse that happens... WBD is happy with Dynamite's rating. Dynamite does good enough ratings, especially in this world that we're in right now. AEW's ratings are just fine for that network. It's just a matter of how much money they want to throw at the production and how much money they want to invest in the product. But I think you're exactly right. It does make pe it does to me make people from the outside look at it and scratch their head and go, you know, what is going on here? So you know, if you look at it, if we look at it from the opposite standpoint. There's always been rumblings about does uh, Warner Brothers own a little bit of AEW? Have they invested in it? You know, if I'm Warner Brothers and I'm looking at this as like a viable property for the future and you see these problems, you see, well, maybe maybe Tony needs help with the infrastructure. Maybe he needs help policing. Maybe this is something that we can actually help with. You know, you could also pump more money into AEW than they have been in order to get you know, a, a better share of the company and have more of a hold of it. You're right. But I, that to me would not take away, even if they did that, Tony Khan is still one of his issues, you know, from what is reported and what 
to me plays itself out is he's so tight controlled over things that even if they invested money, unless they were the majority, how much how much is Tony Khan willing to hear? Apparently he'll listen, but how much he's actually able to hear and what he actually filters through and wants to take out of it because, I mean, look, he wants to control Ring of Honor. He wants to control all of these things, and it seems to be as tight as you want to hold on to water at some point. You know, it slips through your fingers here, and you open your hands, and what have you got? So, you know, to me, if they can help with anything... It would be putting people in place in a management wise in HR and in some of these positions and maybe getting some people who are far better skilled with handling that environment and keeping things quiet. And I would think a guy, I mean, how many things get talked about in an in a wrestling locker room as, you know, so take an NFL locker room or a major Premier League locker room things are said and they're able to tamp that down and you don't hear a whole lot of it or you hear about it way late or you hear about it multiple handed you know so to me they could help probably help with something like that more than anything like even just in the locker rooms i'm in there is so much stuff that gets talked about that never gets out never scandalous stuff a lot of personal information that'll just never reach the public and you know uh, in most cases that's for the better but uh we'll let all the uh tribalists chuck their spears at each other and shoot at each other now everybody can take sides and and have their fun we'll move on to wwe who will be having their fun by making lots of money this weekend in cleveland ohio a place that you know very well filthy tom lawler i was hoping you would actually be there this weekend and be the one that actually shows up at the gcw show and beats up mance warner obviously that's not going to happen so we'll just stick to the wwe stuff tonight smackdown rocket mortgage Fieldhouse in cleveland Women's tag team title match, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn against Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. And the WWE tag team title, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa against the Bloodline. And apparently at the AIW show last night, I believe it was, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa made a appearance. And it may be their last one at a wrestling show where they finished the night as world tag team champions. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. It can't be. The Bloodline's got to win those belts, right? They've got to. Uh, on the surface, I would imagine that there would be two tag team title changes tonight. You could move forward with the idea that Bianca and Jade are going to go with some sort of split if they don't win. But I would be shocked. I would be aghast if the bloodline do not walk out as the tag team champions. You know, it's you possible know, it's- that Alba Fire and Isla Dawn get some sort of controversial victory here or we get some sort of non-finish where the match is added to the pay-per-view tomorrow not on the main card but on that three-hour pre-show considering they have a whole lot of time that they're going to need to fill but we'll get filthy's thoughts on that as well as the entire SummerSlam card when we get back from break wrestling observer live back on wrestling observer live mike semper vivi and filthy tom lawler here with you big boss man brian alvarez will be back with me on monday on this show if you want him sooner you can check him out over the weekend he and dave will be doing a wrestling observer radio after SummerSlam at some point on Saturday night slash Sunday morning. Dave will be back with Garrett Gonzalez today on Wrestling Observer Radio and certainly is going to surely be talking about the MJF Britt Baker situation as well as anything new heading into this weekend with SummerSlam. Uh, If you want to be a subscriber, you can do that. $14.99 gets you everything that the site has to offer, including all of the incredible archives of Figure Four Weekly of Wrestling Observer Newsletter and all of the podcasts, a ton of uh, site-exclusive podcasts are up there and other content. $9.99 if you only want video live and on demand through YouTube. There are select podcasts also available through iTunes at $9.99 as well. You can find out all of the information you need to know over at WrestlingObserver.com. Filthy Cleveland Browns Stadium. It's not usually a winning place. I mean, let's be honest about that, but... Should be a a good day, at least on paper, 
SummerSlam looks like a really good show. Just weeks ago, I myself teamed with Josh Bishop and Sam Holloway and Cleveland Browns' own analyst, Nathan Zagura, as we took on members only Jeff Jarrett and Satnam Singh. Not only did we win, but we defeated them in a Muni Lot brawl. The municipal lot. That's where the battles go down in Cleveland. So I know all about fighting in the land, baby. And there's Dude. this weekend. SummerSlam, one of the biggest shows of the year. I remember when I was a kid getting so pumped up for SummerSlam. I had, what was it? The, the On tape, it was Hulk Hogan taking on Earthquake. There was also... The Ultimate Warrior and Ravishing Rick Rude in a cage at SummerSlam. Demolition versus the Heart Foundation. Two out of three falls. Oh my god. Just spectacular stuff. And it's going to be even better now this year, I think. Stack Show. Gunther is going to take home the title. Cody Rhodes is going to retain when Roman Reigns returns, what a weekend it's going to be in Cleveland. But let's be honest, you're really hyped up about this because you are the number one jelly roll enthusiast here at F4WOnline.com. I probably am, actually. Are you, the hate are, goes I, you on. You probably guarantee probably that you are. I'm jelly roll, to be fair. You're not a jelly roll guy? I'm not really I'm not a jelly, really roll, jelly guy, roll guy, no. Guy, no. Huh. Mm. Why is that? I just, I don't, I, Country Bronson is what he looks like to me. I think that's part of it. And it's like, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm yeah, not, just, a not a big country fan. Country and, fan and, and I don't know. He, he when was it comes on to like country, music. women hey, listen, country, country, is good. country is good. He was on Strange Music originally, which is Tech Nine's uh, record company there. So why don't you go back and do a little research on the past of old Jelly Roll. What, about what, white about guys starting their career in hip-hop and using that to jump to something else? Does he do a song with Post Malone? He does a song with Post Malone, doesn't he? Who doesn't? That's a good point there. Anyway, Jelly Roll is going to be performing probably just on the main show because I'm sure he actually costs a lot. I'm not trying to downplay the guy. The guy's a star right now. His uh, light is shining as bright as ever. Do they want to pay for two songs and have him on the three-hour pre-show? If I were them, I might as well, since you're spending all that money anyway. You can just find a sponsor that can pick up that end of the bill for you. But the three-hour pre-show is going to be taking place. We'll see if he's on there. Singles match, Seth Rollins as the special guest referee. CM Punk back in the ring for the first time in a long time against Drew McIntyre. This build-up to this feud with these two guys being petty and sniping at each other have been outstanding. Drew McIntyre has been great for like two years now, especially on the microphone with his attitude and all that. Seth Rollins obviously hates them both. What do you think the result of this match is going to be? I think we're going to get the old Shawn Michaels swing in the chair cracking the Undertaker in the head. And I think we're going to get Drew McIntyre winning when Seth Rollins inadvertently screws CM Punk. I like I, that idea. I really like that idea. And having these three continue on in a triangle, just sniping at each other, I am all for it. Intercontinental title, Sami Zayn against Braun Breaker. This is the one where if you actually bet on wrestling and go to these online betting sites this is the one that everybody is saying yeah if you have a house and you're stupid enough to bet it on pro wrestling bet it on Braun Breaker winning the Intercontinental title to me there's no way he can lose this match I mean yes there is and move forward but this whole thing has been built up to him finally taking this belt away right I don't know Mike I was thinking about laying down some hefty money on a Sami Zayn and Madrimov parlay <laughs> Not not a fan? You don't think Madrimov's beating Bud Crawford? You don't think Sami Zayn's beating Braun Breaker? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I, no don't. I don't. Yeah, me actually, so. <laughs> I, I think Madrimov's got a better chance than Braun, than uh, than Sami Zayn does, to be fair. So, Braun Breaker's walking away with that title. 
Liv Morgan against Rhea Ripley. This is one that a lot of... This is kind of one where, you know, honestly, it could go either way as long as Dominic is going one way, and that's with Liv Morgan. It's hard for me to believe that Dominic won't do something here. Maybe even Carlito joins in and does something here, and we see Dominic split off from Rhea Ripley here. Again, because, like, the scenario you laid out with, you know, Seth Rollins of possibly doing something accidentally to cost CM Punk the match, that could happen here with Rhea and Dom, right? Or juice left in going back and forth with, you know, who does Dom really want? I think it's actually too early for him to just straight up go with Liv, even though that should be the intended destination. So I think, kind of like you said, there's something, some chicanery goes on here. And I think in the end, it's Rhea that kind of gets screwed. Logan Paul, LA Knight in Logan Paul's, I don't know if it's hometown, but certainly his home state of Ohio, the United States champion. He has been that for quite some time now. This, to me, would be a great time to go ahead and, if you're going to do a title switch, do it at SummerSlam, L.A. Knight. I'm not saying that he's falling off a cliff or anything like that, but, you know, he was on the rise there as far as his popularity goes, and he's still right there, but I think giving him the U.S. title and then giving him something with somebody that's a regular on the roster here going forward on SmackDown certainly seems like the time to do it, although... Logan Paul is such a big name, and with his brother's fight coming up and all that stuff, there is value there with him in that title. You're talking about his brother's fight with Mike Tyson? Well, just is the fact that his brother to? exists, brother too, exists but yes. too, but yes. yes. fact that uh, not only is Logan Paul and Prime getting sued by the Olympics, but now he's in a battle with Olympic boxer Amani Khalif over whether she's a male or not. Uh, this Logan Paul and LA Knight feud dates back to, I believe, Royal Rumble times, which is almost ancient history in the WWE. But I have been waiting and waiting and waiting for Logan Paul to lose this belt to LA Knight. If you remember, they interjected Randy Orton into the feud for a little bit. But LA Knight has been chasing Logan Paul for the entire year and it's about time that he gets the win and I think he's gonna I think he's gonna win the championship here Logan Paul had a lot of things to say this week Pat McAfee had some things to say this week too I'm sure there are people that are going to be I don't know we'll just go ahead and, and leave that there I know there's a lot of people who have their feelings on both sides of of that when it comes to Logan and Pat McAfee, we'll see if any of it spills over into anything that happens this weekend with the press conference or pre-shows or any of that sort of stuff. Women's title, Bailey and Nia Jax. I would say Bailey wins. I mean, I would pick Bailey in this. I'm not saying that we got to jump right to her and Tiffany Stratton, but I, I don't know. To me, uh, uh, Nia Jax with this title here, I don't know how it really benefits anybody unless you're going to do some sort of breakup with Bianca and Jade where, again, you know, maybe Nia can align with Jade or vice versa or something like that. I, that's the only thing I can see with her as a champion right now. I think that Nia wins this, and I think we get a few months of Nia, you know, getting laid out in tag matches and then wondering if Tiffany's going to cash in. She's looking like she's going to do it, but, but doesn't do it, you know, and then maybe she'll challenge for the uh, title on the other brand, you know, maybe she'll turn baby face and challenge Naya. Although it seems like it'd be pretty soon for that, but oh, yeah, the crowd oh, yeah. would certainly be there for it. So. Yeah. Tiffany is, you know, since she's been called up, it has not been a lot since recently, obviously getting involved in the money in the bank mix and all that sort of stuff, but people have taken to her big time. So th there is that world heavyweight title. You already said your prediction here. I'll say mine. Yeah. Gunther defeats Damian priest. Again, it'll be interesting to see how this ends. We haven't seen Ludwig Kaiser for a while or anything like that. And to me, it's just time where, it's time for Gunther to win. You know, he's only had that one loss to Sammy. I think him defeating Damian Priest again 
if the Judgment Day is going to splinter, you know, this would be the show. And it would be some drama leading into Monday. You got three hours to fill on Monday. So if they do decide to do some drama with the Judgment Day, uh, I wonder if they double up on it and do it with Priest and Gunther. But I'll give Gunther the victory there and then Cody Rhodes and Solo Sokoa. I believe tonight, I would assume, uh, this is what I'm fantasy booking here in my mind. DIY and the Bloodline is the main event tonight. It's probably going to go, you can give it with intros and the commercial breaks and all that sort of stuff. 20, 25 minutes on the show. DIY loses, the Bloodline beats them down, which leads to Cody Rhodes running out there. And I'll say that he gets beaten down tonight to give some drama leading into can solo sokoa win that title on saturday i don't believe that he will i believe that cody Rhodes somehow survives and gets the victory but i'm of the belief that if we don't see a roman reigns appearance that we at least see a paul Heyman appearance or we have some sort of specter or shadow of the fact that there is going to be something taken out on this new group because I'll also throw in the name Taula Tonga Hikaleo, who I could also see debuting tonight to help the Bloodline get the victory and possibly maybe even beat up on Cody Rhodes. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> they've got, I think they've got to get Roman Reigns back soon. I would think SummerSlam is as good of a time to do it as any. And we haven't heard from The Rock in a while. We haven't heard from The Rock since WrestleMania either. I don't know if he's over in Japan filming the Smashing Machine right now or what the deal is, but, um, you know, there's got there's to be some movement in this storyline one way or another, and uh, I expect it to be a, a big angle tomorrow. Now, one thing we didn't talk about when it came to MJF and all of this drama this weekend is the fact that he is in Mexico tonight facing off against Templario. We'll let you know what's going on at Arena Mexico, as well as the rest of the world, as much as we can in about two minutes when we get back from break, Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Sempervivi and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you at Wrestling Observer Live. We did not mention that AEW will be taking place tonight, Rampage, in its normal time slot, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on TNT. Collision on Saturday will air from Arlington, Texas at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. It was taped on Thursday. It will be airing at 5 p.m. There is a Star Wars marathon taking place on TNT, which, of course, pushed the show back. And then, obviously, to make things worse, WWE decided to add a three-hour pay-per-view or a three-hour pre-show in before their premium live event. MJF Templario, tonight CMLL. Although the match I want to see, I'm sure that's the one that's going to get all the heat. It is getting all the heat right now, Filthy. Pac and Rocky Romero against Mascara Dorado and Volador Jr. Sounds awesome. Yeah, Rocky and Volador Jr. have been conjoined at the hip for what seems like two years doing great matches. And then you add in Pac and Mascara Dorado. Are you kidding me? It's going to be off the charts. One of the great bits is anytime Pac shows up for anything, whether it be a press conference, whether it be the 7 a.m. local news in your town where it's time to promote a show, he shows up in his gear on with the scowl, with the hair all wet and all that sort of stuff, did the same thing today at the press conference. I love that bit, Filthy. What is a bit of uh, that you like that somebody does out there in the public that doesn't get enough love? I think it's uh, I think it's whale jokes. I think it's Brian Alvarez related whale jokes. I think the public's been clamoring for more and more of them as time has gone by. You think anybody's clamoring for more and more of us doing shows on uh, on, on Friday or really any day? Well, even if they're not, they're probably going to get it again in the future. So, hey, just accept it. And with a whole it lot will. of notice, just like you got today, Filthy, for Filthy Tom Lawler, for producer. <laughs> for producer John, uh, for producer Daniel, my name is Mike Sempervivi, and we shall talk to you again after a while. <laughs>